What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. Today, we're going to talk about a couple of features that the Vortex ECU offers and uh, setting it up with the TPS calibration. And then we'll cover how to get into the active traction control mode. So you're looking at a 21 Honda CRF 450L. Now, the thing about the 450 is it's got this toggle on and off switch. And the reason why we need to do this procedure is because with the Vortex, to set the endpoint limits, we need to be we need to crank the engine and then hold the kill switch at the same time. It's not possible because if we go to kill mode and we hit crank, we don't get a true activation of the bike. We don't start the bike. We're not attempting to start the bike. So we need to do that through a pin here on the back of the ECU. So you've got your vortex and you're gonna pull your side panel off, or if you've got an aftermarket tank, get it out of the way, but you need to get access here to the Vortex. And I don't have the bracket in, just for, we did some testing earlier, and so for convenience, I don't have it mounted up, but yours will be mounted with their little rubber boot, and then the bracket, and it'll be all secured. So you're gonna go to this pin right here. So looking at the back of your ECU, this is the upper right-hand pin. You see that little red placeholder? That's just a little cap, a water type cap, that because Honda isn't using, that circuit on the CCU setup, we're gonna remove that. So get yourself a dental pick or like maybe even a razor blade or a safety pin or something, but you're gonna just find the edge of this thing and with a little bit of a grab here, it's gonna come out and there it is. Save this thing, don't lose that. This is what keeps that, that particular connector watertight, but that's somewhere safe. So we're gonna take a piece of wire. We need to ground that to chassis, chassis ground. So I'm gonna take a little piece of 18 gauge wire right here and I've twisted the ends and I need to probe into that connector hole. This is um, a little piece of 18 gauge wire and so very carefully slide it in. Now it's gonna go through the rubber. There's a little rubber O-ring in there and you'll kind of feel it push past that. And that's where I'm at now. And then the wire, the splines of the wire, or the little, um, the conductors. You need to have a, you need to have braided wire. Don't use, don't use solid wire. So basically, what's happening is inside of the ECU right there are a bunch of pins, and so we're going to take the wire and press it, and it's going to go over the top of the pin on the ECU. And if you pull your ECU out, you could see that. So I'm kind of simulating that right here. And when it slides over the top of it, you will feel a little bit of pressure, and then the release as the as the wires go over the top of that. And then I even heard a little bit of a noise as that happened. I'm sure the camera is probably absolutely not picking that up. But there is a little bit of a noise and there's a little bit of a feel as that wire goes in. And then when it's when it's all the way in, it's just it won't push any farther. And so now we've got connection. And then I'm gonna take the end of my wire here, grab it to an alligator clip. And then I'm going to connect it over here to the negative post on the battery. You could do, you could do a ground. You could take your wire and you could connect it to ground. So you've got a good chassis ground right here at the subframe. Even over here by the radiator, there's a big ground lug where a bunch of ground wires come together. The point is, is this connector that we just put in there needs to go to chassis ground. That's either the battery or the subframe or anywhere that's bare metal, but it needs to be grounded. Once we've got that, and how you'll know that you really do have a good ground, is you'll put the uh, the run button here. You're going to toggle this to the down position, so that's that's the uh, run. The motor will run. The engine, the starter motor will run. And then when we press the start button, the um, well, let's try this. So when I toggle the key on, notice the fuel pump did not run. So really, electrically, what's happening is we're in this kill position. The bike right now is electrically thinking we're in this position, but we're not, we're over here in the start. And so just simulate that one more time. The fuel pump did not run. So you know you have a good ground when the fuel pump doesn't run, when the key is on. So with the engine in the run position and not touching the hand grip, so we need the hand grip to be in its relaxed position, we're gonna press the start button and I'm gonna hold it for five seconds. And then to set the upper limit, the top limit, I'm gonna pull the grip all the way back to wide open. Press the start button again for about five seconds. And we're done. That sets the minimum and maximum TPS limits in the Vortex ECU. So you've got, uh, once, once you're finished with that, 
all you're gonna do then is you can just remove the wire, take everything back apart, and then poke that little red terminal end. Take this thing, slide it back in, and you're done. Next up, we'll show you how to activate the active traction control mode on the on the 20, well, I guess it'd be the 19. So the 19 plus Honda CRF 450L ECUs, Vortex has added a function um, and it's active traction control. So what, what it's doing there is it's looking at the throttle position relative to engine RPM and then it's making some calculations to tame out and control wheel spin. And it's a great function and we've tested it and it's very, very similar to what GET is using, to Athena is using on the GET ECUs. And I would guesstimate that it feels, to me anyway, about a level five, possibly six of uh, the 10 modes or the 10 variable positions of traction control on the GET. I would estimate that the Vortex system feels about like a five or a six. With the Vortex, it's an on and off. The GET, it's a rotary knob that you can select through 10 different modes here on the Vortex, it's just the on and off. And so how you enter into that mode is when the bike is running, and so now I've got this down and the bike will start, because remember I've pulled out that little connector. So when the bike is on, the bike is running, the engine is on, you're gonna blip the start button. And by blipping that, that will put the ECU into traction mode. And how you will know that you're in traction mode is the check engine light will blink at you at a very fast, rapid, pulse. So let's do that now. So what I did there is I turned it on by, by hitting the button and that gave us a flash. And then I toggle it off by again hitting the start button, I blipped it and that turned it off. Since the start signal goes through the ECU, you, you're, not, you're not activating the starter motor when you do that. It's just sending the ECU a signal. The ECU uh, commands the starter motor to fire and so with the engine running, it's, it doesn't do that. Um, and so those two features are um, how you set up the, the the TPS endpoints on your Vortex. Now, who would want to do this? Anybody who has a bike where they suspect that the previous owner had done anything to mess around with the TPS uh, at all. There are guys out there, there are internet uh, forums, dudes in chat rooms, and there's some YouTube videos that talk about how you can screw around with the TPS and that will give you uh, different performance levels. Um, so if you have a bike where you suspect anybody's done that, you're gonna to wanna to set the TPS. We also like to do that on every new installation because even though your stock bike is supposed to have correct value and even though the Vortex is supposed to be pre-programmed and flashed to accommodate that value so that they're the same, there's just instances where you'd like to verify that and prove that out. And we always, when we install a Vortex ECU, do this little operation and now you know how to get into that traction control mode. So those are two functions and features that a lot of guys don't know about and uh, happy to share them with you. And so if you have any questions about this procedure or anything related to your bike or tuning or anything that we can help you with, please let us know in the comments and go out and get some adventure.